Gypsy Felting and I'm Joyce and today we're gonna work on this little roly-poly bear and he's really cute he's got all kinds of little details and stuff and he's really easy to make and I'm gonna show you how to do that so one of the things is is that I like to gather my materials before I start um, so what you'll need is you'll need your felting pad and a variety of felting needles um, and a bamboo skewer if you have one so these are your your felting needles uh, you can do this with a single needle, but it's a little bit kind of tricky. So I always recommend using um, either a two prong needle to work a little bit faster or a three dimensional. This is like a 3D, a three prong needle so that you can work on three dimensional projects a little bit easier. Um, you can do this with the one. So it's OK if you just have one needle. Um, I gather my colors and things that I'm going to use beforehand. So. I have a lot of different little colors here for the details and then you'll need the most of this kind of brown because that's our main color. So think about um, like four or five pieces just like this or maybe about a quarter of an ounce of yarn of wool. Um, this is also what you'll need more of as well. This is the core wool which is kind of wool batting or kind of the plain wool. Sometimes people have this and it's already brown. Um, and this is what we're going to use to create our sphere, which is what our, our little ball, which is what our bear is modeled after. So to get started doing your ball, bring in your felting pad. I'm going to put this down. And take your wool roving. And we're going to build a sphere by rolling it into a little ball right here. So just as if you were kind of squishing it with your hands, rolling it up, Remember that fiber compresses, so even, that, even though that looked like quite a lot of fiber, when I let it go, it is still pretty fluffy, So, but when it, when it compresses, it gets kind of tiny. So if you just kind of take it, take your needle, start poking it, you're gonna use like very deep into the wool pokes to get this all compressed. And we're gonna continue doing this for about five to ten minutes. I know that seems like a long time, but once you get started, it doesn't seem, it seems like it'll go really fast indeed. So of course, if you have a multi-tool, you can use your multi-tool to help you along because this is three times as fast as a single needle. So, so after about ten minutes, this is what your, your ball will start to look a little bit denser and deeper. And you can kind of say, do I need more? Do I need to add some more to that? You know, maybe I don't, maybe I do. Um, then we can get started covering the ball with a different, with the, the outer coating of the bear. So you take your brown roving or whatever the main color of your body is going to be and you pull it apart gently. If you're having difficulty pulling the, ro pulling the wool from the roving, um, you can see how that's kind of like, oh, can't get it out. You have to just remember to go to the end and gently tug and you will find the natural break in the wool and you can get it off pretty easily that way. So you don't need a whole lot to start covering your bear, but what you want to do is you want to lay it down really smooth so that you don't see any of the white underneath. And at least when you have white underneath, you definitely can tell whether, you, whether you're covering it or not. Um, and we're going to lay it really smooth. And then we're going to take our, our needle and we're going to do, instead of really deep into there, because we, we don't really need to get too super deep in there, we're just going to kind of poke along the surface. So this is like the shallow jab that I call. And you can start as it's going in th into there. And the smoother that you put your down your wool, if you lay it real smooth and real kind of continuous, you'll get a nice kind of smooth texture on this little bear right here. So once you have your ball completely covered, then we can start to think about where do you want your, your face to be. So when now we have this ball and it's completely covered. And of course, as you're working this ball, it's going to get a little bit tighter and tighter as you keep working it because that's the nature of felting. It starts to compress and it starts to kind of tighten things up. And to make your um, little ball look even smoother, you can roll it between your hands and that helps to smooth the fibers out as well. So when I go to, to make the little face on this bear, I kind of kind of figure out where where he looks best standing up. You know, I imagine that he's already got his little arms and legs on him. And I'm going to put this face like right here. 
So I take my bamboo skewer and I'm gonna use this to create a little bit of the face, the muzzle for the bear. I take my little bit of white right here that I have and I'm gonna wrap it around the tip. So wrap it around the tip. If you ever find like little bits and things in your wool because you know, this came, wool comes from sheep and sheep are natural creatures. And sometimes you just have a little bit of the barnyard left into the wool. So you can just kind of pick that out of your way. Don't really worry about it. It's not a big deal. Okay, so we have this wool. We've wrapped it around the tip. We're gonna slide it off and it doesn't have to be super tight. It can be kind of loose. And then we're gonna kind of pinch it so that we have this kind of little bit of a cottony fluffy thing going on right there. So then you're gonna hold it against where you want your face to go just remembering to give it enough room so that you can create more details down here. And then you're gonna to start to poke with your single needle all the way around the edge. We're not gonna necessarily poke too much in the middle yet because we want to retain that kind of little poofiness, that kind of cotton ball-y thing going on here. And that'll give us a little nice muzzle. But if we actually keep going just around the edges, you can see how it'll start to make that little detail right there. And you know, you can always add more wool if you feel like you don't have enough on there. You can always add a little bit of another layer. I'm just gonna kind of, holding it down right here, you can start to kind of imagine that there's a little mouth down there. Even though it's not there yet, we'll make one later. Just be careful not to poke yourself. So. Okay, so we can see how the this muzzle is well on its way to being a muzzle. It's a little bit softer than the surrounding bear, but that's gonna be okay because we're gonna keep going and keep adding to it and working it. So I wanna get a little, a little bit smoother line, so I'm just gonna put some more white around it. And you can kind of gather the wool with the edge of your, your needle and just kind of poke in there. So you kind of gather it, the, these barbs are like really sensitive in that they'll grab the tiny, little, tiniest little fibers. You can kind of just delicately sweep up the little edges and your edge becomes really nice and clean by poking all the way around. See, I haven't once poked in the middle. I'm gonna poke in the middle of this when I go to add the nose at the end and the little mouth area. So now we have a little what looks like a little brown ball with a little white little spot on it. And I promise that this is gonna turn into a bear. Okay, so now you get your next color, which is we're still working on the face and we're gonna do like these kind of big eye spots right here. And you take just a little bit of roving. This might even be too much. And you kind of gently turn it into a little circle and put it against where you want it to go and then needle felt it down with your single needle. This is one of those things that's a little bit trial and error until you kind of can figure out, oh, do I have enough wool? Do I need a little bit more? How big do I want these little spots? Um, if you run into a section where you've just like, oh, I put too much wool, you can always peel it out. It comes right out. Um, about the only time it won't come out is when you've been like, er, er, just really poking it in there. Um, and then you can always cover over it, all right? So needle felting is really forgiving. It's really easy to do. Um, people eight to 80 can do it. So just kind of working on our little eye spot. We're going around. This one, I want to be more flat. So I am gonna needle it in the center. Okay, so we're ready for the next little eye spot. We can actually see how it's kind of coming along there. And I have my little piece of roving that I've been poking. And I'm just gonna work it all the way around in a circle right here. 
I like to put the face on because um, the face gives me a good place to know where my limbs are gonna go. If I was to attach all my little limbs and I'll make my little feet and things, then I might get like, I might not have room for my face afterwards. I might be going, where, do I, where did I was gonna put that face? I know it was gonna go around here somewhere. So I kind of like to do it this way. Um, sometimes I might build the face before I even cover the bear and then kind of cover the bear around it. It's just a matter of whether you want to work on top of something or you want to you want to cover over something or you want to like kind of carve out a little little place for your face first and then put your roving around it or your body covering. So that's pretty good. They're almost the same size and that's one of those kind of little details that you can just kind of keep looking at it and go back and figure it out. So now we're starting on going to make the limbs. So let me show you how to do that. So you get more of your brown roving because these limbs match the body covering. So I like to split my roving into several sections. Probably this is about a half an inch wide and it's about four inches long and that should be plenty. I'm not gonna do a core. You, some people, if it was a bigger bear, you could make a core um, limb or a little leg or, or a paw or whatever and then you could cover it with the outer coating when the reason why we make stuff with a core inside of it is just to save on the nice coloring of your wool. Sometimes the colored wools are more expensive, so if you use like an inside core of the plain stuff, you don't really waste your nice pretty colors. So we're gonna use the bamboo skewer again, and this time we're going to make simply a little bit of, we're gonna start farther down and wrap it around. And we're just gonna make kind of like a little, sausage shape or cigar shape right here. And you can actually kind of start to, you're starting to felt it just with the compression of your hand. And you're gonna turn this around and around in your hand. And that starts to actually felt it, even though it doesn't seem like it is, it really is. So then you slide it off and then you can take your needle and you can poke it. So, as you poke it, kind of needle it up and down, you're gonna to wanna to leave one of the ends kind of loose and free because we're going to, that's where we're gonna attach our limbs from. So that is how you start a limb. And it's pretty soft right now, but as you keep needling it, it's going to firm up. So here's some limbs that I was working on before. So I have, this is, I kind of make like a couple of big ones and a couple of small ones for the arms and then a couple of bigger ones for the legs. I like to make all my limbs at the same time so that I know that at least two of them are gonna match and pretty close. Sometimes if you don't, then you have like one leg is really big and the other leg is really small and it looks really weird, but. Okay, so you've made all four limbs and you have rolled them between your hands to kind of compress them and make them a little bit more solid. And now we've got two limbs for the arms and we've got two limbs for the legs. And sometimes it's kind of like, sometimes you forget which ones you've done, but just try to do the best you can and make sure that you kind of like, okay, those are two big ones. You can always cut off like kind of, this one obviously is really long and that one's really thin. You can cut off little bits and pieces I've also made some ears the same way, except that these ones kind of were really tiny and they came out really a little bit and I made them more tapered on one end, just like an ear. And I made a tail too, and it was just like a really fat ear. So now I have all my little pieces and we're gonna show you how to put them on. So if I was gonna do the, let's do the kind of upper arms first and this works for attaching any kind of, of um, whatever, whatever it is that you're attaching, an ear, a leg, whatever you have. So I kind of gauge to where I want the leg and I'm gonna take the end that is still a little bit fluffy. I haven't needled it too much. It's still kind of loose. You can even kind of spread it out to be a little bit looser, but it shouldn't be necessary. You kind of hold it against to where you want it to go, take your needle and you're just gonna start needle felting this extra wool back into your other project. This really is helpful if it, especially if the wool matches the outer covering, so you don't have to really do a whole lot of work that way. And you can just kind of hold them against your body and, or against his body rather, 
and needle fill all the way around. You can also like kind of open him up and you can see if he how loose he is or how firm he is attached and you can kind of go back in to the little armpit over here and kind of needle felt some more. Now, if a lot of people kind of get they don't like the way it looks when they first attach it because they have this like awkward like join. What you can do is you can take a little bit of extra wool and you can lay it over your your project where it joins and you can needle felt this down so that it looks like it's kind of more smooth and more consistent. And that just kind of joins the rest of the covering. So once you have all of the little limbs and things attached, you can go back and you can kind of see which details or which which areas do you want to add keep adding if you make a mistake and you're like i don't like the position of that limb you can just take it right off and whoops watch out they're flyable you can just take it right off and pull it apart and start over again sometimes people like to start with the ears because the little ear position is important so i would look at where his ears are line them up um, sometimes if you want them closer to his, the top of his head or more to the side, you take that little tuft of loose wool and then needle felt it back into itself. So, kind of lost another lost my other ear somewhere. I don't know if there it is. I found it. So here is my other ear and then you can just do the same thing on this side. Sometimes when you have the the other ear can actually or the other putting two of the same things like put both of the front legs on, put both of the ears on. That way you know that you're getting them symmetrical as opposed to not getting them symmetrical. So we have their little ears are already attached. So if I was gonna go back and let's pretend that we already have our legs and stuff on and I wanted to add some details to this little bear, you can be aware that your single needle can be used to actually create like a sculptural element. This is especially um, useful when you have something that's kind of poofy. So if I was gonna go back and add a nose to this little bear, I start by needling where I want my nose and I'm just kind of doing this in a roughly little triangular circle. I don't even have any color yet. But you can start to see how I'm making like a little Y kind of muzzle. And I'm doing this by needle felting along a line and kind of doing it very firmly and doing it in this along the line that I want to be kind of compressed. So, and because we've left this kind of poofy, it is making like a really nice little muzzle shape right there. So then I select my nose color that I want and I just need the tiniest bit of wool. It's not even, you could lose this. This could be like something you pick off your clothes or something like that. So a little tiny bit and I'm just going to put it where I want the nose. I'm going to give it a, a swirl which gathers the fiber around my needle and I'm going to poke. Swirl and poke. And this is the simplest of noses because you can just do a little tiny Kind of little triangle, little bear nose, right here. So if I needle felt into my little, like a little triangle area, right here, it just do, does the perfect little nose. So now I want to add another little detail. So I'm going to take. Maybe I'll do a little tiny bit of black right here so that I can add them like a, the mouth line. And I'm just going to start from the center of the nose. And once again, it's just the tiniest little bit of fiber, but you can see what a sharp line it makes when I start to, to needle felt it in the direction I want it to go. I actually like so small, I could, I almost lost it on my sponge, but it's just the tiniest bit. Start from the center, work your way down. And there it goes. And 
and then you can needle fill it around. So let's give him also some eyes so you can see how to do an eye. So as I do the eye, I'm gonna just take a little bit more. Now if I wanted to do an, a really deep eye, I would kind of needle fill a little place for this eye to go. And this is kind of like you're creating like a little space for it to go. Can you see how that is making like a little dimple? And then I can take my wool and I can just kind of fill in that little dimple. So I already know about how big it's gonna be because I made that little space. It's very handy to do. Now, if you don't feel like needle felting eyes, you can always sew eyes on. You can sew them on with like a little bead or thread or these fancy little glass eyes. You can do eyes in lots of different ways, but I like to needle felt eyes. And this little eye is pretty simple because it's just gonna be the eye spot and the pupil and that's it. You can experiment on your own, looking up different kinds of eyes and adding different kinds of eyes. So before I do anything else to this eye, I'm gonna go back over here and make an, a matching eye. So I made my dimple where my wool is gonna go. I have my little bit of black wool and now I'm swirling and poking into the center you always work around the edge so that you can retain the little bit of three-dimensional kind of relief thing going on right here. If you find that you don't have quite enough wool, like you don't feel like you have enough, you just grab a little bit more, put it down, and needle felt it into place. The best thing about when you're adding the details is to go a little bit slower, um, just kind of think about it, and then just go, don't be afraid of it, just you can do it. So now the little finishing details, I'm going to add a little spark of life right here, and I want to see where the little bit of white is going to put it in one corner over here and then kind of in the corresponding corner on the other side. So tiny bit of white, swirl, poke, and it's pretty much very, very easy to do. Swirl and poke. And you can see how this little guy has come to life. He is a very cute little bear. Um, one of the other details that you can do is you can add things like some color in the ears to kind of give him a little bit of dimension. Just put your ear against the pad, kind of needle felt a little bit. You have to kind of be aware that there might be a little bit of poke through on the other side of that color, but it's easy because you can just kind of trim it off. So if you have any kind of color that comes through where you don't want it to. So giving him a little bit of color on his ear. And then another detail would be to, our original little roly-poly bear has a little orange tuft on top of his head. So I just kind of take a little tuft of wool I maybe fold it in half, fold it in half again, and then you're gonna needle felt just the top, just the edge of it into there so it kind of stands up. So with just a few little finishing details, you can see how he has gone from being kind of a plain bear to being kind of a really fun bear. So now that you know the basics of kind of attaching your limbs and adding details, you can start to make your own little roly-poly bear. And um, if you have any questions, you make the core first. So you make the core and then you cover the core and then you gra gather your palette and make the limbs. We have little limbs over here. So make your limbs and then 
attach them and add details and finish your roly poly bear. Thanks for watching Gypsy Felting. If you have any questions, please an uh, enter them in the comments below. And don't forget to follow along for more adventures in needle felting, subscribe to this channel, and visit my Etsy store for supplies and kits for the projects featured here. Thank you.